on your Jump, 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 jump. What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party What's up, I'm Talib Kweli Welcome to the People's Party. It's a family show. Yeah. We got the lovely and talented Jasmine Lee in the place to be. Yeah. Oh, they love me. Yes. No doubt. Jasmine, how you feeling? I'm great, man. Okay, we taking it to the East Coast today. We keeping it East Coast. We going to start in New York, but go up and down the coast today. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's travel. Okay, let's travel. Today's guest on the People's Party embraces being different and has straight up been able to change the whole game by doing so from his first full-length solo project black ben carson which is a fantastic phenomenal <laughs> name for a project i'm so impressed by this to 2019 all my heroes are cornballs which is also a great name a very exciting talent a true creative a risk taker in a world where way too many people conform mm -hmm. to the status quo Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for JPEG Mafia. Yeah. 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 Libra gang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a Libra? Yes. She thinks she's Miss Cleo. <laughs> I always know when there's a Libra in the Libra house. gang is his mother. She senses it out. Respect, man. How Feel you feeling? It. I feel great, man. Honestly, after that um, intro... <laughs> Damn, bro! Like it, it's you, you. You don't really realize this shit till you somebody say it in chronological order. It's uh -huh. good. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, really you put good. putting it work, man. You've been grinding. <sighs> You've been yeah. making it happen. Yeah, man. I'm just. I'm kind of drunk right now. Right, I'm trying to get there with you, <laughs> Mr. People's Party. Is there a mixer in that whiskey? Nah, shit. People's Party. It. We People's drink Japanese party, we whiskeys. Drink, yeah, we drink it straight, man. Um, we just take it straight. Black Ben Carson is such a great title. Thank you. Um, All My Heroes Are Cornballs. Veteran is also a great title considering your story. Yeah. Um, My favorite title from you of a song, you got song and project titles that are very impressive, is Jesus Forgive Me, I'm a Thought. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw an model. interview with you where you said, and I was very impressed by this, you said uh, that you name, I'm paraphrasing, yeah. that you name your songs, these titles to sort of suss out and weed out the fake fucking fans. Mm. Yes. So if like somebody sees that title and doesn't want to click on that, that's not a fan you need. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like my, my, the titles for me, mm -hmm. I'm a very like strictly, not strictly about the music, but I'm very much about the music. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are the technicals? So for me, I'm so about the music. The title can be like whatever because mm. it's kind of like weeding out who's listening and who's not. Yeah. So yeah, a nigga might see that title and be like, yeah, no way I'm listening to that. <laughs> right. It's like, cool, we can split right here. Right. Yeah, I don't even need you around because you probably not even going to fuck with me and what I, my energy and shit. So like, yeah, that's like, it's it's almost like a defense mechanism. It's mm -hmm. like the first barrier defense. It's like, will you get past these weird titles? If yeah. you will. Come on in. Type mm. shit. That's a great so, level of self-awareness. Yeah. It comes it, it, with wisdom. There's certain wisdom in that. Pretty, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I, I had to realize this like later on, mm -hmm. like coming in the, in the game and on the come up, you have to like realize, you have to like, I don't know how to, what the word I'm looking for is, but you have to like kind of deal with everything in real time. Mm -hmm. So I ain't realized that shit until I was like in it type shit. I'm like, yeah. I, oh, or I had to remind myself, like, <laughs> right. you know, you do some shit and you forget it when you're in the industry. Right. But yeah, but that, that's basically, it's the first line of defense. Like, right. all right, do... Are you not good with this? Then we don't even need to fuck with each other, period. Um, JPEG Mafia is a great rap name, too, bro. Oh, thank you, man. How'd you come <laughs> up with that rap name? I really like that rap name. I was actually thinking about that the other day. Mm -hmm. I remember specifically where I was. I was in Japan, and I was mm -hmm. with my homies. And, um, yeah, we were all specifically, like, we, we, we need a new name. We were trying to, like, mm -hmm. do some different shit. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was inspiration from um, ASAP Mob. Okay. Because ASAP Mob, a lot of... Oh, shit. <laughs> we getting started early. Oopa! The people's party. We getting started early. <laughs> Look who we done started. Get, get that man another... Yo, another I'm so sorry. Don't Can I grab another whiskey? We don't want to get sued right. or anything. I think, we got, I think we got copper mug. Get him a copper mug. He, he, needs, a, he needs a plastic cup. Yo, it. niggas fucked up and let me get drunk before <laughs> the interview. Not even during type shit. Uh, but... Yeah, yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm hopefully I'm there by the end of the interview. Don't break your glass, Tyler. We only got. It would be like Greeks. So I'll start breaking glass all over the studio. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, every a lot of people do it now. There's a lot of like 
names. It's like a title. Mm-hmm. It's it's basically like this. It's, it's almost like some military chain of command shit. Right. ASAP Mob had like ASAP Ty, ASAP mm-hmm. Fur. So mm-hmm. I just switch the order of it mm-hmm. instead of the the title beforehand. I put it after. Mm-hmm. So it's like whatever mafia. So that okay. that's one. That's how I came up with the name. Basically. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Word up. And and I came. I like the name because like. If you said the name JPEG Mafia in 1976, it has no context because JPEGs yes, don't even exist. even exist. You know what I mean? Yes. It, it's something completely that's embracing uh, the present. That's right. Yeah. So that's like, right. Yeah. I am from Flatbush. Oh Brooklyn. yeah, yeah. You too. Yeah, you <laughs> born in, you born in Flatbush, Brooklyn. Yes, sir. East Flatbush. Um, your parents are Jamaican. Yes, sir. My families are extremely Jamaican. <laughs> Talk to me about Church <laughs> Avenue. Flatbush Avenue, Rutland Road. You know what I'm saying? Tennis court. Yeah, man. All that shit, man. I, I grew up there. I was in Flatbush until oh yeah. Okay, we have more than Thank you, man. And we back just like that. We back just like yeah. that. Um, yeah, I was in Flatbush um until I was about um I say around like twelve or thirteen. Mm-hmm. I um at one point I was going to school in, in Flatbush, but then like my mom took me out of school because I was um, you know, it, it was like a Problem school, mm-hmm. they call it. So I switched schools. I started going to school in Queens. Um, but yeah, yeah, Flatbush, uh, New York, that's where I was, that's where I was originally from. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in my lifetime, I've moved around so much. From 13, mm-hmm. I went to Alabama, Louisiana. Um, I went to Japan. Jeez. I came to Baltimore. Mm-hmm. I've been so many places. Baltimore, because a lot of people get confused like that. I'm actually glad you said that shit. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people get confused. I claim Baltimore because this is... Very clear. This is the first place I ever lived that I chose. Yes. Everywhere else I lived in my life, I've mm-hmm. either been told or I was just living with my parents. Right. Whatever. Home is where the love is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is where my family is. My family right over here. Yeah. Butch, Heno, yeah. Zeke. Shout out to Freaky. all of them. These are all my family. No these doubt. are the people, like, when I came up, these are the people that came. So I call Baltimore my home because these are the people that, like, anchored me. I moved around so much. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the privilege of having a place where I like had some stability. My mm-hmm. life was too, it was too like all over the place. But yeah, Flatbush originally. What, how did you get to Baltimore? What made you go there? So it, it was after I got out of the military. I was living in Japan for a while and I had family that was been living in Baltimore for a while. And um, I went to Baltimore because, yeah, strictly because my family was there and it was a good place to go and like mm-hmm. I didn't have to pay rent because I mm-hmm. had my, my family there. And then eventually I got to the city. You mentioned going to Alabama. Um, we were talking earlier, you said that was around 13 or so? Yeah, 12, 13. It was, it was around the time 9 11 happened. Um, in Alabama, the racism is different than the racism in New York City. Very different. Um, how did experiencing Southern racism at that age affect you? Shocking. Okay. I can't lie, it's scary. Um, it buckles you. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, at 12, it's not something you're mentally equipped to deal with. And mm-hmm. coming from New York, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you say you was in Flatbush, so like... Mm-hmm. Very like, diverse. Yeah, like, n- uh, well, not, not even, yeah, more diverse than where I was at. I right. grew up with mostly, like, Latinos and black people. Right. So, like, when I was um, growing up, we, like, I even had, like, African-American studies at yeah. school. That shit don't exist down there. So, mm-hmm. like, what I learned about Alabama, I had a very stereotypical, like, the Klan is going to be waiting for me right there on the state line, <laughs> like, ready to go. And, you know, it wasn't literally that, but what I found out, it was more um, cerebral. Mm-hmm. I use that word a lot, and I don't even know what that shit means. But, it's like, like it's Professor X shit. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's more like it's a lot of mental gymnastics yeah. people play. And if mm-hmm. you're not ready for it, I'm just glad I, I, I'm glad I, I encountered it at 12 because Mm -hmm. by the time I was 20 or 18 I'd already had years and years and years of experience with it as opposed to like finding out when I'm 22 or some shit like that right right but yeah the the racism is very different it's a culture shock and it's just shocking in general because like coming from like only being around niggas and Latinos Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and then going Mm -hmm. to like legit like yo I just hunt and spit dip (laughs) <laughs> and bump Hank Williams right. it's like it's shocking on several different fronts for a 12 year old mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying Not even, for an adult it's shocking before a 12 year old it's like holy shit I had yeah. to adapt to a lot at very quickly yeah. with no experience to do it really right. so but yeah that's it's very shocking yeah it's crazy you had to deal with racism when you moved because when I moved to Florida they called me racist because I had never had white hold people up. in my class hold on hold on yeah how who called you racist? The white people. <laughs> the white people called me racist. Who the fuck? Yeah. What'd you do? I just I said that they smelled like mayonnaise or something like that. And I didn't know that you were not supposed to say stuff like that. 
publicly? Outside of the house. You, you said it publicly? I said it in class. <laughs> right, the white because people, does they smell like mayonnaise? They smell like mayonnaise? I'm because they were like dogs. Dog. <laughs> Whatever. I don't remember exactly what they I said. They like it was, mayonnaise. It was something the about The dog mayonnaise. thing is a real stereotype thing. That's like, a real thing. Yeah, no, for real. Like, if you live with white niggas, I was in the military, <laughs> I live with white niggas, you see that shit firsthand, you're like, oh, these niggas is nasty as hell. Yeah, cause, bro, because like, because you grow up thinking like white right. people got everything like down packed, like oh they right. got everything figured out. But then you actually live with them and like, oh these niggas is nasty. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is nasty as shit. Sorry, yeah. white I've, had, I've had similar experiences. Yeah. Uh, for the sake true. of argument, uh, <laughs> our unverified anecdotal experiences are not uh, peer reviewed data, but I have also had <laughs> a similar experience. So I know what you're talking about, brother. I relate to what you're saying. <laughs> um, I like the way that you keep it a buck yeah. like that yeah. um, you have a lyric um, we taking back Brooklyn but you can lead a coffee you can lead a coffee baby you can lead a coffee <laughs> yeah, yeah. talk to me about gentrification how you feel about gentrification in places like Brooklyn it's so crazy when I first saw gentrification in my life I didn't even know there wasn't it wasn't called gentrification mm -hmm. I didn't know there wasn't a word for it, it that word popped up to me like in after 2010 mm -hmm. but when I first I left New York and I was living in the South. Mm -hmm. I went back to New York in the mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's just like, just cracker shit going on around mm -hmm. this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it's like, it is what it is. I'm not pressed about a bunch of white people in one area, but mm -hmm. I am pressed about a bunch of white people in an area that like used to not have any. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's weird. It's very violent. Yeah, it, it's weird. It's, it's And it's conflicting, man. Mm -hmm. It's like... It's weird. When, so when I first experienced gentrification, I didn't actually know what it was. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was strange that white people were not occupying spaces that were considered dangerous or like mm -hmm. whatever, whatever before when I was younger. And I didn't really understand. It wasn't years later that I was like, wasn't until years later that I realized, oh, there's a word for this and this is actually a thing. And then yeah. I made a song about it. Yeah, like we took in Brooklyn Black. We take in Brooklyn Black, you can lead a coffee. Right. Yeah, that's right. in the, um, I'll never forgive Wait, what song was that? It was um, I'll never forgive hipsters for what they did to Brooklyn. Right, mm. which is another great song title. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very I'm very direct because right. I what's the song about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm direct because people aren't right, or at least when I was making that song, people weren't mm -hmm. about that specific topic. After the Mike Brown situation, mm -hmm. that song was made before that. But after mm -hmm. the Mike Brown situation, there was a a, a spike in awareness of this mm -hmm. kind of thing. But at the time. I was naming shit literally because there was no, nobody else was. Yeah. You know, nobody attacked racism in the way that Ice Cube did in like the early 90s at that time. Yeah. So like I, yeah, I, I did that shit literally because I was just like, I'm going to put it in your face because I don't want you to like have to dig through this shit. I want you to know exactly what the fuck I'm doing from the get go. Mm -hmm. So I'm very direct. Let's talk about Ice Cube for a second. Absolutely. Um, you came here on a day, you know, sometimes people don't know this is, you know, podcast magic over here. You know, we film more than one baby. episode a, a day, right? Yeah, people will be freaked out by the um the list, Ice Cube. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like me, we had homie that did a house party. MC8. Yeah. We yeah. had MC8 here today, but we had Ice Cube. And I, you you mentioned Ice Cube a lot as an influence. Yeah. Um, When I was coming up, and it's buggers, I know we different ages. So yeah. I, I love the fact that it makes me have even more respect for Cube. Because my my style of, of MCing, yes. when I break down who I am as a rapper, it's a mix of... The, the fire and the passion of Ice Cube, mm -hmm. the knowledge of Karis One, yes. and the voice of Q-Tip. That's actually really accurate. You, it is you, accurate. That, 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 I've thought about it a lot. <laughs> <He just> said, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm yeah. actually thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, that's who I am. That's extremely accurate. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, who I am. Yeah, and definitely. so, you know, I met Ice Cube once before, but it was just at a concert. This is my first time really sitting, chopping it up with Ice Cube. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, a lot of people... One of the things I was able to talk to him about was just how revolutionary and conscious Bird in the Hand was and Fuck the Police was. Yes. Um, a lot of people look at Ice Cube and NWA as, as rightfully so, as we started this gangster shit, this is my fucking thanks we get. Yeah. But I feel like you look at Ice Cube at like the Chuck D version of Ice Cube. Yes. You know yes, what I'm saying? man. Ice Cube... Um, Ice Cube is a lot of things for a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. But for me, Ice Cube attacked a specific kind of racism mm -hmm. in a way that was just like ground level. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, I love public enemy, mm -hmm. fear of a black planet. Mm -hmm. 
um, Yo Bum Rush's show, mm-hmm. uh, Nation of Millions, etc. But they attacked it in a way that's like, we're attacking it with knowledge. We're attacking it with this and this and this. Ice Cube mm-hmm. attacked it from the everyday like. I want to move your the... drink while you're talking. You want to move it? I want to move it because I feel like your elbow is going to go. I like the elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be another party foul. <laughs> Let me put this keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. But no, I, Ice Cube mm-hmm. attacked racism in a way that nobody else was attacking. He attacked mm-hmm. it from a ground level like, this is me. I don't. I I might not read all the books. Right. I might not like have all the knowledge, mm-hmm. but I know what's up, mm-hmm. and this is how I do it. So like he was able to like regurgitate that shit in a way that just appealed to me mm-hmm. because I always felt this, but I never knew how to express it until I heard America's Most Wanted. And right. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Right. Now I, I ain't hear America's Most Wanted in 1993. Or whatever right. when it came out because I was like two years old. Right, of course. I heard it when I was when I was like very young, like ten yeah. or eleven, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" But yeah, Ice Cube, he showed me that you could talk about topics mm-hmm. like racism and mm-hmm. didn't have to be preachy, mm-hmm. didn't have to be this, didn't have to be that. You could attack it the same way you talk about selling drugs. Mm-hmm. You just ground level. This is my extent of this knowledge, right. and I'm I'm kicking it out like that. So Ice Cube is a huge influence because. He made me want to rap. I was just producing before right. that, but like he made me want to rap because the, the the shit that he talked about, I didn't know you could do that like that. Right? He's I like, I heard I payback's a motherfucking nigga. Yeah, that's why I'm sick of getting treated like a goddamn yeah, stepchild. stepchild. Right. Fuck a yeah. punk because I ain't him. You gotta deal with the nine double, double M. M. Yeah. yeah, just like hard shit. <laughs> Yo, I did a um, I did a, a cover. It was like a Halloween thing. Mm-hmm. I did a cover of um, Ice Cube. I was, I pretend, like, one person was core and one person was ever. I, mm-hmm. I was Ice Cube and I did America's Most Wanted. Yeah. Top to bottom, straight out of Compton. Yeah. He's one of my favorite rappers. Yeah. Hands down. If I met that man, I'd probably cry, man. Yeah, I feel oh, you. I feel him you. Earlier. I feel I you. I know. I saw that shit. I, I told him <laughs> earlier. I was like, I should just showed up at yeah. 10. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now, you said that you were just making beats before. Yes. Um, you play uh, just about damn near everything, right? <laughs> you about to get to school No The okay. only instrument I can play Like professionally mm-hmm. Really is the keyboard Okay but you're making Making <clears throat> beats right Yes but I know how to Figure shit out Okay I don't know how to play The guitar Okay but you fucked really. around You play any shits On your shit That's yeah. why Because it's listed In your bios And uh, online That you play all these things But I think yeah. it's People don't expect Producers and rappers Who do in hip hop space To even do anything besides Yeah be- Just make beats They don't understand Even making beats mm-hmm. Fruity Loops and all that shit, DAW, mm-hmm. DAWs, mm-hmm. Uh, Digital Audio Workstations, mm-hmm. they're instruments. To right, me. right, right. So, like, that for me is an instrument. So, right. my, my instrument Everything is, is a, banging on the table. Bro, yeah. that's the beauty of rap because it's like you don't have to know how to music theory in order to do right. it. So, it fucks people up. But, like, yeah, um, I my instrument is really a DAW. And, and keyboard is where I know how to play. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, with a DAW, you're able to, like, transfer information and do different things. So, like, you can play mm-hmm. the keys to something and then, like, transfer it to a guitar or something like that. But I don't know how to play guitar, et cetera, et cetera. But right. the beauty of rap is I'm able to figure that shit out and make mm-hmm. what I make because, like, I'm dedicated to my craft. You know what I'm saying? That's where rap overlap with punk rock. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. And I hear a lot of punk rock aesthetic in your music. Yeah, and no. the way that you approach it with a very punk rock energy, like fuck it, like I'm 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 unprofessional on purpose, <laughs> right? Because fuck <laughs> being a professional. As an artist, we've earned the right to not be professional. You at know all. what I'm saying? Like Lauren Hill could not show up at a show, and she's still gonna be Lauren Hill. Yeah, but no, it- yeah, she's <laughs> earned the right. Yeah, no, th- this is facts because I I operate like this, and a lot of young kids don't. Mm-hmm. But I operate on, on a very respect. Uh, driven basis. Mm-hmm. So you, for example, mm-hmm. you're a legend. You've earned I the right to do whatever that. the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. You don't. Have, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. People like this have earned the status. You've put the right. work in. You've done the tours. You've done the fucking. You've dealt with the bitch ass journalists. Mm-hmm. You've done all this mm-hmm. shit. I'm going through right now. But I take it further. Even I take it further. I, and I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But even a step further, as an artist, once you make the decision to be an artist, mm-hmm. then you've earned the right to do to whatever you say art is. What if your art is, I'm just going to not show up? What if okay. that's what you're doing as an artist? I like, have a question. Yes, in, no, in no disrespect like to Miss Hill, but I'm not, I mean, I am an artist, but I'm not a music artist. But do you think that's really fair for people to come out and like get babysitters and, you know, take off of work <laughs> I'm gonna and I'm going to tell everything? you why it's fair. I'm going to tell you why it's fair. Because when you come out to see a concert, you have no relationship with the performer on stage. You have a, a contract with the venue owner, 
or with a club promoter. That's who promised you that someone's going to show up. Not the artist. The artist has a whole different relationship with the venue owner or the club promoter. So you could come. You have every right to be upset. The fucking promoter said, Janky Promoters, we had Ice Cube, he's talking about Janky Promoters. Yeah, janky like the promoter. Janky Promoter told you the nigga was going to be here, then the promoter got to give you your money back. But guess what? As an artist, I get paid regardless. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know what? It, it might not sound fair. And you know what? It probably isn't fair. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that as unfair as it is, you earned it though. I'm still gonna be me. Yeah, Nina, you earned Nina it. Simone, Solid quality, you earned it. You can do that. Yeah, Nina Simone stabbed a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> a fan in the audience. <laughs> imagine you go. Imagine you go see your favorite artist perform, and they stab you. <laughs> now, because she stabbed him. Do she get any less respect for being Nina Simone? Does that change how we see her as an artist? Not at no, not no, at all. No, the art had you have. That's why being an artist is dangerous and is brave because it's like you get to, you get to, you know, you you get to be like fuck it. As MF Doom, the nigga be like, sometimes I don't feel like showing up. Fuck it. You I, paid. You paid to see the mask. <laughs> you paid to see the mask. As I soon even, as you see the mask, I didn't even it. get hip. Yo, it wasn't until I started performing on a regular basis, uh -huh. and I was like, "Yeah, send that nigga in. Yeah, send that nigga in. <laughs> send that nigga in. Yo, fuck that shit. Yeah. I don't want to come today." Before on the other side, you just a fan. You like, I want to see the shit. But mm. on the, on this side of it, you like, as sometimes that's a performance. I'm not saying everybody is new. Sometimes that's a performance. Sometimes you want some Andy Kaufman shit. Yeah. Sometimes you want some Gigi Allen shit. Sometimes you want some shit that's like. You don't you not you don't have to understand it, you know what I'm saying. And sometimes you got to reclaim your time because it's something you just marvel at. Yeah, as an artist, you are you are a human being first. You are not a product, and people confuse the fact that you create a product with the fact that you are are a product, mm -hmm. right? So let's take Miss Hill for example. We not that woman. We don't know what she's going through. What if she has mental health issues? What if she has family issues? What if she has financial issues? What if she has spiritual issues? From what I could tell, sometimes I've, I've toured with her. You know what I'm saying? She has DJ, she has a DJ Reborn come out. Shout out to Reborn. Reborn is an excellent DJ. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Reborn will be playing for like an hour or two, getting the crowd hype. Sometimes she's like, the vibe gotta be right. It's just a vibe. Some artists are just about the vibe. I've seen her like with Reborn killing it, and the vibe of the, of the building is so hype with what the DJ's doing that she'll be like, now, showtime right now. Showtime right now. But what if, what if you're not feeling the vibe? That's as a human being, you have a right to be like, I don't, Lauren Hill don't have to explain that to us. As a human being, she has the right to be like, I'm just not feeling it. No, and right, guess what? She, I'm not a product, so guess what? You don't get a show tonight. Lauren Hill, you, like, Ice Cube, these people have put the time in. They don't have to do anything they don't want to. Right. You could go back and listen to their old shit if you really feel a way. Bro. Because <laughs> they're no. not jukeboxes. You could just put the quarter in a jukebox, Honestly, press play on your iPhone. You, bro, yo, you specifically, Bro, I used to lime wire your shit. <laughs> Thank lime you. Lime wire, throw back. <laughs> I used hey, to man, steal your it. shit. I used to pirate your shit. Fake it till you make it. Get it where you fit in. Listen. Just get the songs. But like, I bought albums later. Mm -hmm. And like, I, the influence is there. And now I'm here. And I'm in interview. That's right. Me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that's the part like nobody else saw. But like, yeah. Like, you, I was bumping like, I want to be good to you. All that okay. shit. Like, just like. Yeah, that's the reason I'm here type shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you, you've you earned the right. Like, you've already put the time in, bro. Lauren, all these people, they've earned the right. I really believe in that shit. Because people don't respect artists. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, people question Lauren Hill when, mm -hmm. if she don't show up to a shit. Like, yeah, she might be going through some shit. Mm -hmm. You don't know, bro. But like, yeah, you pay money to come see her. And your, your time and money is, is valuable, too. It's extremely I'm not shitting valuable. On, I'm not shitting on work. It's extremely people. valuable. It's, it's valuable. You should go to the club promoter and get your money back. You should. And he owe you that. But that's the danger of being in a club promotion business. Sometimes a human being that you told people might show up might have a human experience mm -hmm. and not show up. That might happen. Of course, yeah, doing I, business. I, I think, like, if people had more respect for artists, they would understand this. Like, the touring we do and, mm -hmm. like, the work we put in, mm -hmm. it's not understood. Mm -hmm. Even producing, it's not a craft that's, like, appreciated right now. I'm in 20 you. years, I think people might appreciate it, but like people don't understand how good a Jay Diller was or a right. Q Tip. There's a reason why, like, if I met Q Tip, if, if, if like, or if I like sit and talk to Q Tip, I talk to him like at attention, like this type shit. I'm so, sure, I'm sure Tip fuck with your <laughs> shit, bro. Yeah, no, no Tip, like, I, I, I did I'm some sure shit. I'm sure you in, do. I did, I did some shit on Danny's for, for uh, Danny Brown. Oh, you on this album? Yeah, and he, okay. and he, and he added some shit. He added accordion and all this other shit. So mm -hmm. I was honored by that. 
But yeah, like I operate on a respect thing. People don't respect artists enough to operate like this, but I do, bro. Like when I meet YouTube, I stand up. That's right. <laughs> you know That's what I'm right. saying? Because he earned That's that right. shit. I can't sit down and talk to this nigga. Right, I, I stand like, up. That's right. I got to stand up and be like, this is fucking cute. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really believe people, I really believe in an honor system. I have a baseline respect for everybody, mm -hmm. especially musicians, because the average fan don't respect the work we put in. So That's right. I do. Somebody got to. No doubt. So fuck it, man. I'm a fan. No key. doubt. I'm on that last Tropical Quest album from being a fan. The, 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 the last one, the one from like 2016? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to song with Kanye and, and, and Oh, yeah, Caesar. you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You was. Yeah, but yeah. that's just for me. I was invited to the house for one day and I was sitting there listening to the album and I was like, yo, I'm such a fan, bro. I would sit here and just watch you make the whole shit. He was like, come through whenever you want. I was like, don't dare me, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm I was here. there every day. I was there every day. Just watch, just sitting there like this. Soaking it in. Yeah, man. Um, speaking of, of Kanye, um, you said something very interesting about Kanye. And um, you said that, uh, we went to talk about his Trump shit, right? Because yes. you, you're very critical of Trump. Absolutely. And, uh, but you were also, like many of us, revere Kanye. Yeah, right? absolutely. And uh, you said that, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing again, but what I, what I the gist of what I think you said was, I'm not going to judge Kanye because who knows what type of stupid shit I would say when I'm over 40. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely though, yeah, yeah. I know. No, gen no, at first when I read it, I thought it was this and forty over forty. I've read it. What the fuck is this nigga saying? But then I, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, he's making up a good point. Genuinely, Tupac <laughs> says something about that. Like, um, he was like, you ever seen a thirty year old nigga who's really brolic like that? About the <laughs> and he's like, because because when you get older, you yeah. just you, you calm um, down. Um, there's a movie Top Five with Chris Rock. And they all sitting around talking about MCs and they like, what if Tupac was alive? And Chris oh, Rock yeah. says, he says, stop talking about what Tupac would be doing if he was alive now. If Tupac was alive now, who knows? He might have been kicking Jill Scott down the <laughs> stairs in a Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> Imagine 45 year old Tupac in a Tyler Perry movie playing the dark skin nigga. <laughs> oh my God. Play, playing the dark skin antagonist. With a yeah. hair piece because Tyler Perry loves hair pieces. Oh my God. Yeah, you got to have a dark skin antagonist. You got to have right, a Right, with piece. some fake braids and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, yo, I, yo, it's so crazy. Tyler Perry, like when I was in mm -hmm. school, they played like his play because he used to do plays, mm -hmm. like straight up plays. Like he, 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 they would play his plays and shit. So it's, it's I used crazy. to, I used to watch his plays on. I used to hang out in Houston a lot, mm -hmm. and his play was very popular. I used to watch his plays on videotape mm -hmm. before they came out. Diary of Mad Black Women, all that shit. That's what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we went to school. I had um ROTC. It's like military uh, class or mm -hmm. whatever. The and like in there, we wasn't doing shit for real. So we just played like Kyle Perry's plays. Right. Them shit's hilarious. <laughs> low shit key. Was yeah. great. Low key, them shit is hilarious. <laughs> and he put the shit together. Them shit is better than the movies. Bro, I, I think so they're freer. Because they're that plays. Is, yo, you, that's why I don't say shit about Tyler. People be talking shit about Tyler Perry. I don't say nothing. Because I remember when he did the plays, I'm like, yo, get your money, baby. Oh, yeah. I don't got nothing to say about you, yeah. bro. Yeah. Man, Diary of a Mad Black Woman 4. I'm there. <laughs> Fuck it. It's retired now. Uh, no, let's go. But no, what, what were you saying about Kanye? My bad. I, no, I was just saying. Um, I thought that was an interesting take on Kanye because it's accurate and it's fair. Oh, is that a joint for me? Oh, okay. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't smoked a joint on people's party since the first episode. Word, yo, with Bun B. Oh we gotta God, tap, I almost died. Tap in, we gotta so tap, we, in bro. Yeah. tap in, bro. Tap in. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Bun B, because we we try to figure out what the show is gonna be. It's gonna be a smoking show. It's gonna be a non-smoking show. And like, fuck, we gonna let niggas smoke. You know what I'm saying? Because this is an office during the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we went over and get everybody high. But Bun started smoking, and then I was trying to smoke with him, uh. and the table's too big. So we were just passing the joint like this. Watch the and, then all, and then all like this. The whole episode, me and Bun is like this, the whole episode. <laughs> and all the comments, the first comments of People's Party is, y'all need a smaller table, my <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, talk you about what ass. you were smoking too, because that shit was way too strong. I hit it once and I was like, I'm That's done. That's like some be real shit. You want to hit this shit? Let me hit that. There yeah. you go. This is some zookies. Zookies. Some cookies. Yeah. It's it's like it's like it's like, zook, it's like cookies cookies and cook uh, cookie dough. Like bur the else. burner cookie shit. Yeah, yeah. You you hit you hit. Shout yeah. out to burner. <laughs> 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 no, you have no, but but the Kanye shit, yeah. When mm -hmm. I'm forty, I'm thirty, right? I just turned thirty. Mm -hmm. When I'm forty, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna think. <laughs> <laughs> There's no telling. When I was twenty, I would never think that I would be like this, mm -hmm. you know. So like, I don't know. I watched Kanye get on fucking paid programming and say George Bush don't care about black people. That's right. So like, I have a different he was perspective. Our hero. I'm saying, bro. I'm like. 
at some point, or this nigga knows what the fuck he's doing. Mm-hmm. So, like, if he's doing it, I don't know what his reasoning is. I don't know what he's going through, et cetera. But Kanye mm-hmm. has earned the right for me mm-hmm. because, like, college dropout, et cetera, et cetera. This man is, <laughs> this nigga has earned the right to do whatever the fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <coughs> as long as he ain't killing. But I know you have a different perspective. No, 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 no. You was like, no, I'm you laughing. Know him. I'm laughing because. Everybody knows how I feel about Kanye. I'm very fucking vocal about everything. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Um, but I got a new song. I'm working on a project with Diamond D. Oh. And, um, and I got a new song. And uh, the hook, I mentioned Kanye in the hook. And I, what you just said is what I say in the hook. I said all these, all these niggas is like bugs in the windshield, right? Going splat on the highway. MAGA hat rap- rappers out here acting like Kanye. Huh. Right? <laughs> so then the next bar, because yeah. there are MAGA hat rappers act, trying to be Kanye. It's yes. true. The next bar is, but you ain't made Jesus walks, nigga. You never you just made Jesus. Ain't talking to boss niggas. Mm. So no matter what I say about Kanye, I can, I can criticize Kanye, but don't, don't get it twisted. Like just because you think you act like you ain't made Jesus walk, it's like the Dave Chappelle skit about Michael Jackson. He mm-hmm. made Thriller. He <laughs> made he made Thriller. thriller. Well, hold on. Can you say that bar? Can you say the whole bar again? I said uh, I'm trying to remember the bar. How, they, how these men feel? They just uh, they 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 we on the highway. There's bugs in the windshield mm. going splat on the highway. Maga hat rappers out here acting like Kanye. Mm. But you ain't made Jesus walks, nigga. You just an employee talking to boss niggas. That's it. Yeah. That basically sums up my feelings on it. Mm-hmm. Kanye made Jesus walks. Yeah. His influence on me is so strong that like it, it, it like I don't agree with the maga shit. Mm-hmm. You know, as, as you don't. Mm-hmm. But like. It's Kanye. Like this is a ass. this is a grown ass black man. Mm. I, I'm I'm gonna like I've never met this man. I will meet him and talk to him before I pass judgment. Absolutely. I'm sure he's a fan of yours too. Man, if if Kanye was a fan of me, I'd probably cry, bro. I'm <laughs> sure he is. I mean, you did a record with IDK yeah. recently, and IDK and Kanye's a fan of IDK. We know that. Um, Most Def, aka Yasin Bey, is a huge fan of you. Did you see him talk about you and Ari Melba? Absolutely, bro. Like yeah. that. <laughs> that shit, that shit freaked me out, man. Cause like, bro, like I was just saying to, to, to these niggas over there, like <laughs> you, Most Def, uh-huh. all these people I meet, I met James Blake, I met like uh-huh. all these different people. Mm-hmm. These are people that influence me. These are people that like influence the way I make music and yeah. the way I do such and such. Yeah. So it's it's really an honor that these people acknowledge me in any way. When I saw most deaf, like nigga. Have you met him? No. But you saw him on that was the first time you heard that he fucking Yeah, was- I, I mean I'm talking about not even talking about black on both sides right. and the danger, et cetera, et cetera. He been um, talking about the, the, the I, shit with you, the the fucking you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he put me onto you. <laughs> For real. The Don't first time that, I heard bro. your name was most deaf. Bro, I'm 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 like watching Brown Sugar and I'm like, this is the nigga that know listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Woo! Yeah. This is yeah. most deaf. Yeah. I don't know how to I don't know how to react to this. Even you invite me to this shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to react to this. This is why I'm 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 a very reclusive person, but this kind of shit makes me like come back, like like wanna sit in the house because like <laughs> yeah, bro, I, I, I'm bumping your albums. I'm, mm-hmm. bumping, most, I'm bumping most Def's albums, et cetera, et cetera. And now these people are acknowledging me. It's it's very scary. It's it's interesting. And it's just like, it's weird. It's weird. But I love it. I You're really love work. it. I really love yeah. it, man. And I appreciate it so fucking much. I don't know how to react to it in real time, but mm-hmm. I appreciate it so much. Are I we enjoying you. how you react to it right, right now? Right, it's amazing. Oh, I'm genuinely drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm enjoying it. Uh, now that you well, well oiled, um, <laughs> Let's talk about some serious shit. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Baltimore because you have a great love for the city of Baltimore. I love Baltimore. Man. Um, Baltimore is a short story city. Um, it's a it's a black city. It's a city that's resilient and tough and beautiful. Um, Nina Simone, Baltimore is one of my favorite songs. Excellent. Song. You know, um, a Sly and Robbie version is great too. Yes, sir. Um, Haha, <laughs> that's, that's so deep and random. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Baltimore is politicized often. Yeah. It's used as one of my, my, one of my favorite terms is political football. It's used as a political football. You have people, Baltimore has been a Democrat city for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, Democrats have a stronghold in the city to get uh, elected over and over again. Baltimore, the stereotype of Baltimore um, and you see it how people talk about Baltimore when people talk about the wire and shit like that. Is that Baltimore is is the epitome of urban decay? Baltimore is a, people that stereotype is Baltimore is a failed city. It's it's an example of American sort of uh, 
just an American city that doesn't work. Yes. I have a lot of love and respect for Baltimore too. I understand that that's a, a very unfair stereotype. Um, but right wingers use this to push back against the Democrats. Right wingers say, hey, Baltimore has been controlled by Democrats so much and look what happened to the city, right? Yeah. Where do you stand on that? I mean, for me, uh, as someone who moved to Baltimore later, mm -hmm. Looking at Ferguson, looking mm -hmm. at um, anything where it's like marching and protests. Mm -hmm. Baltimore pushed back on a situation that like other cities would do something different. Mm -hmm. They said, we're not going to take this shit. Baltimore is different, man. Yeah. Baltimore, like the corruption there is like on a different level. Mm -hmm. So like... When Baltimore stands behind something, it's the realest shit ever. Like, when I right. moved there, I, I realized, like, this is a city that's going to, like, ride for the cause type shit. And you moved there with Freddie Gray, the, the uprising surrounded Freddie Gray. Yeah. Happened in, was it 2015? Yeah, 2015. Right. And when did you move there? Like, 2013, 2014. So you were just fresh in the city, and this had a huge Very effect fresh. Yeah. on you. Yeah, it, it had a huge effect. During the Freddie Gray shit, um, the, the city was actually um, locked down and had like a curfew thing in effect. Mm -hmm. And um, I was driving around there. I was like, you know, meeting people and talking to people. And like, I was stuck in the city because I was driving around and trying to figure out what was going on. Like, I, I, I saw a Walmart that was on fire and yeah. I was just like, I don't know. No city reacted to... A situation like that, like Baltimore did. Mm -hmm. They said, fuck this shit completely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I respect that because like, I'm not the type of person who... I don't believe in the pacifist thing. I've looked at history and I know my history. Most of what's been moved forward, even in America, is from violence. Mm -hmm. And from like people saying, fuck that shit, we're going to mm -hmm. do this. So like I appreciated that Baltimore did that. Yeah. So I when 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 they did that and when I, I and that's when I like kind of first moved there, mm -hmm. I was like, this is this is it. Mm, this is right. the place where like I can claim because this is what I would do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like that's why this is part of the reason why I claim Baltimore is home. Mm -hmm. Not only because of my friends and family there, but like because of that. Before yeah. I even knew anybody, they was doing that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They were like you you did this to one of uh, our people, our mm -hmm. citizens? Mm -hmm. Nah, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, Baltimore, mm -hmm. greatest cities on earth. Random as shit. I played a show with you in Baltimore. Really? What was this? At Soundstage. Mm -hmm. You the priest, Smith and Wesson, you and Immortal Technique. Jesus, I remember wow. this. <laughs> Shout out to all them, at, all them people. At Soundstage. Okay. At Soundstage. And I was, I remember I was like, <laughs> Nigga Talib Kweli just was walking my, around with that, the that was my um, people's champion tour in the morning. Yes, sir. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, but yeah, that about Baltimore is why I claim Baltimore is my home. Yeah. It's the first place I chose to be my like the first place I chose to live, and the first place I saw that was like we're not gonna take this kind of injustice. Right. Like on just just a ground level, fuck that shit. We're gonna riot. We're gonna do such and such. I appreciated that. Everybody right. was like, oh, they're burning their own places. We don't own those places. Right. Martin Luther King is a, speaking of pacifism, um, I am someone who tries, like, I, I consider myself, I'm anti, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not considering myself a pacifist because I feel like a pacifist is like no violence no matter what. I'm anti violence. I'm pro karma. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have no control over karma. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Shout out to Dalim to, 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 to Kwali. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Ma no, Martin, <coughs> Martin Luther King was a pacifist. He was a revolutionary pacifist. Yeah, he was. But one of his famous quotes, most famous quotes is, a riot is the language of the unheard. It is. And so he understood. It is. And he, and he said, and he said, and he said, talking yeah. about riots and breaking that, that quote down, he said, how can I condemn the rioter? When, without condemning the conditions that caused the rioter to behave the way he behaved, it's the truth. And what he was saying probably fell on deaf ears at the time. But yeah, what he's saying is the truth. Like, um, 
how can he chastise the rioter without understanding where they're coming from first? Yeah, are the conditions that make them be like, yo, if, it, 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 if you have no voice, your voice has been taken away from systemic oppression in housing, health, mm -hmm. education, every mm -hmm. single thing that you need to live and survive, your voice has been been been, been stifled. stifled. Yes, sir. Yes. And so at some point you'd be like, you know what, these niggas can't hear me. I'm going to break this window. Oh, yeah. no, you hear me now. The, this is how things move forward. Any country, any like revolution, it's always moved forward by violence. Mm -hmm. It's never moved forward by peace. Nothing has ever been achieved. As weird as it sounds, nothing has ever been achieved from peace. So when I look at black people as a whole, I look at shit like this. Cause mm -hmm. I'm just like, a lot of niggas want to do like peaceful shit, protests, You need both though. You need both. You need both. You can't just have everybody fucking up everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can't put a blanket... Like Jan like Janelle Monet said this best. Mm -hmm. We're not a monolith. You can't put a black in a blanket statement on like yeah or something. Yeah, you have to like do it case by case. So like yeah, you need both. You really need yeah. both. But like yeah, you n nothing for black people. We don't. We haven't achieved much from peace. What's well, a strategy? It's like an you know Ava's movie, and this is fictionalized, but I'm sure conversations like this did happen when uh, the movie she did about Martin Luther King Selma, where uh, yeah, where where. King and, and 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 Coretta Scott met with Malcolm X, mm -hmm. and people didn't understand that the relationship that they were developing before they, their demise. But Malcolm X was like, "Listen, they don't know that they need you because mm -hmm. they don't want to deal with me." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't want to deal with me, so we need you know they. It's like we have to work together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's the God like they, honest. that's the truth. And everybody protests differently. Yeah, yes. we need each other. It's like it's like this. If there's an HBO documentary about Dr. King about his last final years. I encourage everybody to watch it. But there's a scene in it where he's walking, he's marching with, with Stokely Carmichael. Mm. And Stokely, Stokely Carmichael, who turned into, be, later became Kwame Ture, he was the black power dude. Like, I got stopped at the airport by the FBI for listening to a Stokely Carmichael speech at Cutting Room Records when I was working on the Quality album for Raucous. This is how dangerous Stokely was. You know what I'm saying? Because Stokely was, and, it's, we, and this, one, this is a good segue that I didn't even intend. The reason why I got stopped is because Stokely used to do speeches about black power. He used to, used to wear cracker all the time. <laughs> so we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that next. But that's what's interesting. I didn't even realize I was doing that segue now. That's such a great you know what word. I'm saying? I don't but, use that word. You know, but, but I we, love that we word. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into cracker. Because that we word. have to get into cracker with you. Woo! But, yeah, we got to get into cracker with you. <laughs> But what's interesting about that is that Stokely and Martin Luther King was marching down the street. And Stokely was like, I'm about this black power, bro. Yes. Like, we young, we fuck, all, fuck these crackers, black power. And Martin Luther King was, while I agree with the brother Stokely on several issues, I don't agree with black power. You know, and Martin Luther King, he was explaining why he thought black power was just not the phrase to be using. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, I'm not, I'm not, that's not where I'm at. And Stokely was like, Dr. King, I respect you, black power. I, you know I, I understand where he was coming from. Yeah, I understand where both of them are coming mm -hmm. from. I completely yeah. agree with Stokely Carmichael. Yeah, yeah. But I also completely agree with respect to Dr. King. Yeah, I, I, honestly, th that's like, this is something that I want to drive home in 2020. It's just like, different ideas in the black community, we mm -hmm. can all accept them all. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I understand where Dr. King was coming from, even though like I don't specifically like adhere to this mm -hmm you know, like this this type of like, th th this strategy. Mm -hmm. I understand why. And I know this type of strategy needs to exist because that's not how I am. I'm very direct. Mm -hmm. I'm very opposite. I'm very like more Mac Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. But like Dr. King, the the peace, the like, the 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 diplomatic, the like, it, it it's needed. You need both. Mm -hmm. You can't have one or the other. It's not going to work that way. Mm -hmm. You need to attack it from all sides. Because yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying? It's I like agree. so. I, I I like I I get it, and I I let everything live. I I'm very much of the of the um mindset that like you don't have to like you don't have to agree with something, but you don't have to like not want it to exist. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. You know what I'm Before saying? you get into the c word, the c word. Yes. I, mean, I, don't, I don't say. Well, before we start, I don't like saying it because I feel like I don't like saying them saying cracker? nigga. I don't like calling white people crackers. I just don't. I don't. I don't do it. They don't even. They like that shit. I don't they think. I, they, they like that shit. They be like, I don't yo, people at my show. These are not regular like, white people. Call right me here. a cracker. You go the show's responsible. They bring us water. Right. They need oh, it. Oh, fire, fire. All right. So you do have a lot of white fans, right? 
And uh, I almost spilled this shit. Yeah, I did. So you tweeted once, I'm going to make it. <laughs> 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 I'm going to make I'm going to make every last one of you fake ass closet racist hip hop fans expose yourself one by one. I'm uprooting you. <laughs> I'm uprooting you hoes in all caps. Until you go back to bumping, bumping, whatever Fantano tells you to. Yeah, is so this funny. still? That sounds like a tweet I wrote. It, you know, I, you listen, know what I'm saying? Junior, like, I'm, I'm, Junior Quali over here. I forgot. I forgot I even tweeted that, and I'm listening to. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Well, that was my next question. Is this still where your head is at with the idea of fake hip hop fans? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's this is not something that's new. This is not something that's new. Or even when I tweeted it. By the time I tweeted that, it's something that I noticed years and years and years. But there's a lot of, like, fake-ass rap fans. I noticed it because, um, you know, if I talk about cops or specific topics or even say the word cracker, Mm -hmm. they come out in droves. They expose Mm -hmm. themselves Mm -hmm. through their views, through their Mm -hmm. tweets, through their et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I can't keep track of these niggas. So I just tweeted that shit out as a, like, a threat. Like, I see you. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't respond to all you niggas individually because you're not that important. Mm-hmm. But, like, blanket statement, I see y'all. You're useless. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I think of you. I want you to know that. They have to know that because without that, they, they feel empowered because when you don't say shit, they think they winning or some shit like that. But I just had to let them know, like, I see you. You just useless. Like you're not affecting anything in real life. So like continue withering away mm-hmm. in private mm-hmm. while you know what I'm saying? Like I'm 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 being successful right now. You're gonna have to find some way to deal with that. I see you, I just don't give a fuck. What you're saying, I have a lot of thoughts about what you're saying. Okay. Because I completely agree with you. Mm-hmm. And many people don't agree with us. Mm-hmm. Um Alexander Hamilton, Lynn Manuel. Uh, Miranda wrote a play called Hamilton. Very successful play. Yes, sir. Respect to that man. Right. My the, man David Diggs was in that. Yes. Yeah, so shout out to David. Um, the reason why Alexander Hamilton is such a unique figure is because he wrote everything down and he combated, he he expressed his thoughts and he documented everything. It was like a constant Twitter feed with this motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Jay-Z said, a wise man don't argue with, with fools because from a distance you can't tell yeah, who is who. Mm-hmm. Now Jay Z, two, Blooper two, that was a song right. Yeah. Uh, Jay Z's a brilliant lyricist, and that's a brilliant lyric. Um, but I do have a counter to that, to that lyric. My counter is, if you are from a distance and you're not invested in the conversation because you're from a distance and you can't tell who's who, then you shouldn't be trying to figure out who the fool is. If you're not willing to come closer and invest time, then of course you can't tell. Well. It- it's people. It, this age, mm-hmm. this is the age of like, let me say the wittiest, cleverest thing as fast as possible mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. without like without any context or basis or even knowledge of what I'm even talking about. Mm-hmm. So yeah, th- th- this is the era where people just have to like state their opinion whether they even have a basis for it or not. Right. So like, yeah, I, the niggas who comment in are all fools usually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so so exactly. So now Nelson Mandela said, "Yo, if I throw, I apologize." <laughs> it's you all good. We have. I'm, di- I'm just going. I'm just going to say uh, that's all good. Because I'm, 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 I'm sitting here. I'm just like, and I feel the like I'm about to puke. Okay. Do if we I need throw, to, do, we, do we need to take a, a break and stop? No, and I'll back? just, I'll just turn this way and throw up. Oh no. Okay. I clean it up. Okay. Are you sure? Because we have several ways we could play this. <laughs> <laughs> It's listen, not just bro. one way we could play this. You can just Yo, go listen, and... listen, bro. You're literally Talib Kweli and you're interviewing me, bro. I'm, no doubt. I'm honored to even be talking to you, bro. I love it, too. Who did this to this man? Uh, who, yeah, who, who is responsible for this? Oh, no. It's going, ew, ew. ew. <laughs> this is a good story right here. It's all good. It's party time. <laughs> no, I don't think... Oh, we... It's hey, this party time. That's what we got. Better than that. It's party time. <laughs> All right, I apologize, Tyler Crawley. <laughs> I'm so bad. Yo, it's so crazy. I fucking threw up in front of Tyler Crawley, man. It's a very rock star. And now, 
<laughs> now he has a people's tea. Very, very, very rock star. <laughs> I had to downgrade. Some rock star <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> hey, man, I feel you, man. Yeah, I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, I'm a lightweight. I'm a t- complete lightweight. I don't know if y'all got that throw up on camera, but like, yeah, I'm a lightweight. <laughs> yeah, lightweight. it was very rock and roll. Um, but um, yeah, but yeah, but I mean, let's talk about what we were just talking about. Um. <laughs> I go hard at white supremacy online. You I, do. I do. You really do. Yeah, you do. I do. You I, got time. You got time. I make time. You know, yeah. time, time, <laughs> time. This nigga got time. Time yeah. management is key. It's key yeah, to life. Time management is key. It's key to life. But I, it would be for not if I wasn't an activist or in those spaces in real life as well. If I'm just the type of nigga to talk shit on Twitter... Yes. I deserve all the criticism I get. Absolutely. When people be like, well, all you do is talk shit on Twitter. I, I can't do that. But my track record show and suggest that I do way more than that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, 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 you know, I enjoy it. I want to do it if I, I didn't enjoy it. I feel like you enjoy it. <laughs> you have to enjoy it. You, you name a song, Wipe My Ass with Confederate Flag. <laughs> Come on, bro. You enjoy that Amazing shit. Amazing time. I love it, man. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the animosity. I love the... Um, <laughs> It makes me wet, man. I love that oh shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is, but like hostility is just more honest to me than like love. It's it's more honest than love. It's like these niggas don't got nothing to lose. They don't have no stake in me. You know what I'm saying? They just give me their honest opinion. I love the hate, bro. I love okay. it. So like motivated by the hate. Yeah, it makes me. It makes me like. It gives me the the passion. Mm-hmm. Like I love it. Hate is like people avoid it and they move away from it, but mm-hmm. it's like hate is like growing up as a nigga mm-hmm. in America, mm-hmm. you learn how to manipulate hate and adapt to hate in a different way because like people hate you for no goddamn reason. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like people hate you for no fucking reason. So hate has a different context. So like for me, like the hate motivates me. I, I get how hate could be a motivating factor. I, I try to, <laughs> a, a little bit, yeah. I, I, I get I, absolutely because when people when people hate on you and send you hate, it, you could turn that into fuel. Yeah, you turn into fuel, and I, I do Gas, the same thing. Baby. I do the same thing. Yeah, but I also try to stay away from hate as an emotion because you make I think you make un uh, non strategic decisions when you operate from from this if you ingest the hate. You know what I'm this saying? Is the, this is the truth. It's it's interesting because you talk about that. You talk about the hate and the anger, and mm. there's a, there's a term. What I, for what I think you talk about, which is righteous anger. Mm. Yeah. This anger that is like, if someone is angry, angry the, the anger is justified. Because yeah. I think you you approach it from a place with, how could you not be angry? You know what I'm saying? Literally. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, literally. Like, that. that's where I'm approaching it from. I'm just like, the shit I'm talking about, it's not edgy. It's not. Fuck that edgy shit. Mm-hmm. That yes. edgy shit is some other shit. Yeah. Pe- That's pe- an excuse. People put the word edgy on me because I feel like they can't deal with the reality of what I'm talking about. There's nothing, N- nothing I say is, I'm not making anything up. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about real life experiences and I'm talking about real shit that people really go through. If mm-hmm. you can't deal with that and you want to put it in the, the realm of edgy just so you can like digest it. Mm-hmm. That's on you. That's cute, but like, <laughs> this is real. Like, right. I, you, I'm a black man. I've been a black man for thirty years. So, like, what I'm talking about ain't fucking edgy. Mm-hmm. It's real life. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know, white people deal with it as edgy because they can't deal with it. But like, nah, yeah, like this is this is real life shit. I'm 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 fucking like touching on. Like, mm-hmm. I'm I'm not like I'm not just talking bullshit. Hey, man, my bad. I'm drunk. I ain't. No, it's all good, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's when the best life. stuff comes out. That's no, no, don't, but, but real shit. Like I'm, I'm not like, I'm not approaching this from just some some bullshit, right? Edgy, like saying nothing for nothing. Like if you really, that's why I appreciate, bro. Like niggas who really, they, you, you listen to my shit and you got it. Like mm-hmm. people who really listen, they get it. Mm-hmm. People who don't listen, they they interpret it as whatever. But like you no. Know, Niggas who really listen and know who I, what I'm talking about and who I'm talking to. No doubt. So, yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about your military time. Okay. Because that's, that's what I feel like is, is very interesting to me. Um, Hear me. Sam, Samuel J- Johnson, yeah. as, you know, had a quote. We said, uh, patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. <laughs> it's one of my favorite quotes. It's good shit. Right yeah. now, I grew up in. I'm born in Brooklyn. I grew up in America. 
I have American privilege. This passport is worth a lot when you go all, all over all over the world. You've yes, been all over the planet. Yes, sir. So I'm sure you understand this. Absolutely. Um, and so I also understand what come with that. You know, I pay taxes here as well. Yeah. So I'm paying for the military industrial complex. Mm. I'm paying for imperialism. And I benefit from it. My life is made more convenient when I buy into the system. Yes, sir. Now, you talk about how you went to the military. Well, how about you tell it? You tell it. Why, why did you go to the military? Okay. So, <laughs> I'm. you know, I'm glad that you're asking me this, not anybody else. But, um, yeah, you know, where I was when I joined the military, mm -hmm. they target and approach poor people in poor areas. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. I was one of those people. They approached me. I was in JRTC. They mm -hmm. came to me and they were like, yo, you know, we have this option of military, blah, blah, blah. And me, as someone who can't afford to go to college, can't afford to do any of the things that, like, you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. this seemed like the only viable option. It was either this or just, like, wither away in the projects. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's just like, this seems like a viable option to someone who has none. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, th this is the reason I joined the military. It seemed like the only viable option for me because I had no other options. If I had other options, if I had enough money to go to college, I probably w I wouldn't have joined. Right. But, like, because at the time I at the time they approached me, I was in such a, like, a vulnerable spot that, mm -hmm. like, this was the only thing that seemed like a, a, a feasible future for me. Yeah. So, like, yeah, this is how I ended up in the military because I was just poor and in the wrong place at the wrong time kind right. of thing. You have a master's in journalism? Yo. So, <laughs> <laughs> they contacted me recently. I have to stop saying that. But oh, you they, don't? Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's on my Wikipedia. So oh, like, my gosh. I, 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 I went to school, but they told me, like, they was like, yo, you better, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I jumped the gun with that shit hella heavy. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm super glad you brought that up. But yeah, they they literally contacted me recently, like, "Yo, nigga, stop." <laughs> so, so where did that come from? I, I I did I studied it, and like, um, when I was in the military, I did classes for it, and like, the military is weird. Like, you don't really go to college. You kind of take classes where you're. I was deployed, so I had to take classes when I was deployed. You deployed in Iraq. Yeah, Iraq, Kuwait. Like I went to a lot of different places, and um, uh, yeah, because you do tours, like you do six months or a year. Yeah. So like I was in Kuwait and Iraq at the time. So like yeah, I was taking classes when I was out there. So like you take classes and you earn credits. They might not add up to shit, and like you know what I'm saying. You might be like. I, I think when I was saying the master's shit, I was jumping the gun because I earned enough shit to do it, to get it. But like they didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they contacted me like, nigga, you, you don't stop that shit. Because <laughs> it's on my Wikipedia and everything. And they just like, but, but, but yeah. Case. But you know what's funny about that? I wanted to ask you about on Thug Tears. You were just like, fake news, we ain't pressed. Fake news, we ain't pressed. I, I wanted to ask you about, as someone who studied journalism, what do you feel about how the Trump administration is attacking the free press? <laughs> <laughs> he's just like what do I even say bro right. he's manipulated the press to perfection right he's used them and like he's he's made it so he's want, he's winning because of the press he's mm -hmm. getting free press mm -hmm. he doesn't have to pay for time mm -hmm. they'll right Every news, you watch Jimmy Kimmel, you watch mm -hmm. Jimmy Fallon, you mm -hmm. watch Stephen Colbert. What are they all talking about? Trump. Yeah, it's like Les Moonves from CBS. Yeah. Where he was like, Trump is bad for the country, but he's great for CBS. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. Ratings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, he's, he's manipulated the press in a way that politicians usually don't because they don't think like that. Mm -hmm. He comes from a different like thing. But, yo, I, I, I don't know what to think about Trump no more, bro. You said you ran out of ways to say fuck Trump. I've ran out. I've completely <laughs> exhausted all options yeah. with this dude. It's like people, I don't know what to think. People think he's funny now. Mm -hmm. People think he's a joke, but it's just like, no, nah, he's like actively fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. You know, but he's going to win again, dude. 
He's he has not, a, he has a chance to win again. People keep saying that he's going to win again. Because he has a cheap because people are I think people are now way more cautious. A lot of people were fooled, fooled and thought that he had no shot in 2016. So now that the way this shit is going and people see how it's going, people are like, "Oh, the system is that broken." Yeah. No, really. I I I tweeted it out like way beforehand, but like I was like, "Donald Trump is our next U.S. president," and we all let it happen mm. because we literally not we was, all we did because like we we it was like. I watch liberal media treat it like a joke that was going to fix itself. It's like that's interesting. That's an interesting point. It's but, genuine. It's like yeah. people people thought yeah. like, oh, this right. no way people will vote for this dude. That's, that's exactly. It's going to rectify like itself. That. It's that's not exactly right. And this is the repercussions of that. He won, and he's here, and he's fucking shit up actively. So we can't like joke around. It's not a joke anymore. It's not. It, it wasn't a joke back then. And it's not, it's super not a joke now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But like, it, it's people like, I, I hope people realize it now, but I, I honestly think he's going to win again. I don't think people really understand yet even. I think he's going to be remembered in a positive way. Like it's like a, some kind of I, barrier breaker. I don't thing. know. I don't. I don't agree with that. I do think he has a chance I think to you win. Will. I do think he has a chance to win, but I think he's coming dangerously close to being remembered. Like worse than Nixon, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think he's coming close to that. I'm not. I'm not to the point. He's not. I'm, he's definitely not at the Hitler point yet. But he's definitely like he's floating in the next in the, in the Richard Nixon he's territory. The, he, he can't lose though. I he think can't. that I don't think he's gonna win again, and I also don't I think, think that is gonna. all of our fault because I feel like if you voted and if you spoke out about people not voting, you know what? Then you did your it's part. It's not about fault. It's not about fault. Yes, yes. It's not about fault. It's not all of our fault. It's all of our responsibility. Yeah. So that's what it is. That's that's where I think we have to come together. It's like we are responsible True. for it. We all benefit from America as people who live here in America. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like it's on us, nigga. It's on us. We we all let it happen. We yeah, did. That, that, it happened that, on our watch. He, he what he's saying is right. That's why I say is 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 we all let it happen. I mm -hmm. meant to say like it could have been prevented if we were like taking it more serious. Yeah. But we didn't. So like this is the we didn't. This is the repercussions of it. And I, I honestly think he's going to win again. I don't think he's going to win. And I, I think <laughs> we'll that see. we're going to fight very hard for him not to win. And I don't even want to keep we'll saying see. that he's going to win. because I, I love your positive speaking. attitude, Josh. And I'm going to keep and it I'm, up every time right. someone says it and on like, the show. I like that. We need we'll more see. of that in the world. We'll see. I'm not saying he's going to win because like I want him to win. Or, I like, understand I, that. I'm just saying like this is the dismal, like bleak outlook that we have. Like I have now because like he won the first time, and I don't really see anything stopping him from winning now. Like that impeachment shit is not going to slow that nigga down. It's bro. just a lot more voices he, now. It's a lot more yeah. people that can vote now. Like I, I feel like that we're making waves to where he can't win. Yeah. And then what you were saying, like how people are taking it as a joke. I don't think people are taking Trump as a joke, but literally when you wake up and you see he said something else, you have to laugh so you don't just want to fuck something up. Like because you like how. You you don't want to keep waking up and being mad. So you're just like, what the fuck is he doing well, see, now? I, I do the same thing. I laugh at some of the things I'm, he's saying because I'm just like, what the fuck is this nigga doing? But people don't understand when to not take it as a joke and yeah. and when to like. They, they don't they understand don't have, like the difference. They don't have the political education. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like I will laugh at it, but I still know that this is a dangerous yeah. individual. People think he's funny, and they'll just take it. It's just like how like you remember how uh, uh, Bush was seen as like the most evil shit mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. and now how is Bush seen? He be painting. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah we, Niggas be like, oh look yeah, at his paintings. Yeah. I'm like. When you view Didn't George Bush, throw a shoe with this nigga? Right. When, you, when you view him in the lens of a Trump presidency, it's like he seems great. <laughs> <laughs> greatest, greatest is a reach, <laughs> but it's but it's different. It's definitely different, mm -hmm. and and it's not it's not even it's not supposed to be different, because George Bush is still George and Bush. he still sucks. He's George. Bush He's still Bush. George Bush. He still did all that bullshit. He literally is like he one of the most evil men to ever exist. He still did all that bullshit. But, but like, but 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 because he's like a cute painter and shit. Like that. <laughs> I just this, want, is, this is his image now. I don't. He's think, one of the most I, dangerous I, men to okay, ever exist, I and agree. now like. It's like, oh, look at him. He's funny. <laughs> I want to get a beer with this guy. I just want us as that's a That's how Trump is going to be remembered, bro. No. Yo, that's why I say, like, Trump, he's going to win and he's going to be remembered, like, well, God, positively. I because, like, people, like, don't know the difference, yeah. yo. They're going to be like, 
he broke the system. This is all he's, I'll say else know, about it. I just hope that we stop saying that he's going to win and instead we do our due diligence and do a little bit extra more to get somebody out there to vote to talk about why it's an importance to go to the polls instead of just like, oh, he's going to win. I, I'm a, I'm I'm a, think we should all, I should think we should all do that. Yeah, yeah no, we, we should. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to vote, of do course, more like than I your always part. do. Do a little bit more than you did last time. No, straight up, I will. I will. I'm just saying, what as a pessimistic individual, Susan I don't think. Susan B. Anthony. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens when you don't smoke. <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. Okay. <laughs> I just don't see a way where he's not going to win, personally. Well, come on. You just turn. You just, okay, let's just. <laughs> <laughs> so I anyway, I got another question. <laughs> yeah, what you got, man? What you got? <laughs> I like the way that you talk about your records as children. Yeah, hell yeah. Because Absolutely. I feel the same way. Yeah. And 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 I, I feel like I people be like, yo, which one of your records you like better? I'm like, you know, my records, I feel like they're children. You don't like, how are you going to choose which kids you like better? But your take is slightly different. Your take is, my record's children, and you know what? These motherfuckers is grown. They get to get the fuck out the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go get a job. Go get a job. Get out of here, you know? Break that down for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's like... When you make something and you have it in, in, in private and you have it in like the forest released to the world, it, it, it has a different context to you. And when you release it to the world, mm -hmm. people apply their own intentions and whatever behind it. Mm -hmm. And it's just interesting to watch. So like for me, it's like it feels like letting your child out. I don't have a child, mm -hmm. but it feels like letting how I imagine like letting your child yeah. would be out. Like be like you let them out and like they get different influences and it might be not and not might not be some shit that they got in your house. Mm -hmm. But like it it's a part of who they are now. It's right. like regardless of what I wanted veteran or all my heroes of cornballs to be, once I put it out, people apply their own intentions and they apply their own mm -hmm. stories behind it. And that becomes the story of it. It's not it's yours, but it's not like you. Like people apply their own thing to it, so right. it, it feels like letting your child out to the world and like, you know, put them out in college, right? Or like, you know, what I'm saying like get, they, them getting influences from like high school or something. You're just like, right. how do I combat this? And you know, and you can. It's just like they're gonna do what they do, but you just have to like have faith in your like. Your child, basically, right, so, right, right. Like, yeah, that, that that that's basically. It, it feels like that for me because I take it that seriously. Like this is my craft. This is what I love to do. So it's just like when I put my art out, it's something I take very seriously. So how people interpret it is like, I, I you know I really watch that shit. Um, you call yourself Peggy, and you play with gender a little bit in certain photo shoots and style choices. Is that you treating gender like bullshit, or is that like just a part of your I don't give a fuck? You said gender. Yeah, gender. Oh, um. Yeah, I mean, like, for me, like, that's that's a... Before, like, people had their own, like, uh, connotations to, like, gender and, like, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. I already, like, didn't respect that shit. I didn't even, like, think about that shit. I was mm -hmm. just like, whatever with that. So, like, when people, when when other people, when, when it started becoming, like, a mainstream thing to talk about these things, I just kind of, like... Yeah, it, it, it was kind of like, it just fell into place. So, like, I've always thought like this. I've just never, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it's bad parenting. <laughs> you know but I, 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 I never got, like, I never got the rules everybody else got. So, right. like, I just kind of interpreted everything in my own way. So, I interpreted everything very neutrally. Right. So, like, yeah. Um, With with, with Doug Tears. Yeah. Um, Which are the way that you perform. First of all, first of all, before I get into that, the way that you perform, brother, is... um. It's phenomenal to watch. Oh man, that's that's an honor. For it's him, for it's very me. passionate. You know, with Thug Tears, should men cry more or stop having a stigma about crying? It's hard because as a black person, as a black man, mm -hmm. being vulnerable is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Being vulnerable could be taken advantage of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As a black person, being vulnerable in general can That's be like manipulated. Yeah. So like thug tears, I was just like, it's okay to do that, but like it's okay to cry and be like emotional and like just in your own time or whenever you want to or however you feel it fit. Mm -hmm. I just it, it, it's I understand that it's dangerous for like black people to be vulnerable on like a public scale. Mm -hmm. so like I don't, I don't know if that's what I was thinking sp uh, specifically with Thug Tears but like when I think about it now I'm thinking like yeah mm -hmm. 
like I, I, I was just like kind of like saying like, yeah, it's okay to like be like this, but just like do your thing. I understand you have to like hide it from certain people, mm -hmm. but like do your thing. You know what I'm saying? It's okay mm -hmm. to cry type shit. But yeah, I, that's that's real interesting that you pointed that specific thing out. Yeah, And it's crazy because when it comes to black men and women, it's like as a woman, you're supposed to be a strong black woman. You're supposed yeah. to take care of everything. You're supposed to be a strong black man. But nowadays the narrative is changing and it's like, you know, hug your sons, let them cry. Don't just say suck it up. Like that needs to be taught more. Yeah, because no, as black people, like you, you're taught like like therapy and shit is never was never a thing when I was growing up. I never right. know about that. You know, you talk saying? honestly on your social media about, about anxiety, depression, bro. Straight up, I got to. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got to because for all the the weirdo black people and the people the black people that like their mental issues were like we had to like suppress it. Mm -hmm. I got to put that shit out there, man. I got to. No yeah. doubt. No, no, no question. I have to because like, I know there's people feeling the same way. No doubt. So I got to, yeah. No doubt. I got two more questions. Oh my God. Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for these? Ready for these last two I questions? I hope I don't throw a hole. I, don't, I hope I don't throw up. I feel like I'm about to throw up, but I'm good. Really? I'm good. I think I just need a trash can again. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying to put on weight right now, I'm trying to gain weight. I lost so much weight on tour. How? Ah, thrown up? <laughs> yeah. ah. I, I, I was trying to eat healthy. Right. I, had I was trying to eat healthy and like I would end up not eating sometimes. Out. So I bro, I was like 150 pounds when I was. Yeah, like, tour. Sometimes you just lose weight. I went on tour with Dead Press. Them niggas used to look like come off tour because them niggas is like. They don't eat meat at all. Yeah, they don't. They got the vegetable oh, song on the arm. Yeah, I got a vegetable song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, the fucking, <laughs> yo, the vegetable song. The vegetable song. I'll be listening to that shit like, oh, yo, shit. these niggas. Be like, healthy. Have a salad. These niggas rapping yeah, my hairs and shit. That's the lyric. That's the lyric. Have a salad. I said, <laughs> play the lettuce with some croutons. <laughs> play a game of chess on the futon. I'm hard, but we we got croutons. Yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out their friends. Yo, stick that on my new album. All right, so um, so two questions. Are we are we on? I'm not drunk no more. Is that my drink right there? It's my drink. Hold on. Man. I don't. Uh, it's my drink. Hold on. I can't drink no more. I, I've I've reached my limit. I threw up twice. <laughs> well, really, just that was the last one. Was the, the, the nah? It was one. twice. I threw up once and then I threw up again. Sad man. If I <laughs> live. Hold on. Let me lie. I'm back in it. You back? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the house. I'm back in it. Jasmine, you had a question. Why don't you start? All right. So you started to replace a uh, nigga with cracker, right? Yes, I did. In all your lyrics, so where most rappers have white crowds shouting out nigga at shows, you've had, uh, you got shows shouting out cracker. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about why that felt important and um, whether that's something that you're going to keep on doing. I, I think I will keep on doing it. And it, it's just switching, uh, you know, if you're able to listen to niggas talking about killing other niggas daily, then you should be able to listen to, like, me talking about crack. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's like testing. It's like Paul Mooney said, Rachel, racial testing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're offended by this, I know what type of nigga you are or what type of cracker you are. <laughs> but, yeah, that's really it. It's just racial testing. No doubt. What have you learned about how people re have reacted to it? I mean, <laughs> oh, I'm drunk as shit. <laughs> Let's right. get another. Who's bringing it? You, you just got bringing it. it right now. <laughs> oh, oh shit! There it goes. Uh, my bad. Mm. It's all good. I I think we should um <coughs> figure out a <coughs> exit strategy. <laughs> <laughs> strategy would be good. How's that? Uh, so the cracker thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, These parties don't stop. Oh shit. You'll stop the Look, party. the cracker thing. Right. Yeah. The cracker thing. Take the cracker thing. From if the you can take <laughs> niggas talking about niggas killing niggas on record, uh -huh. you can take me switching the 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 the, the fucking word to cracker. It's just a test. Mm -hmm. If you react to it at all, I know what you're like. Mm -hmm. I know who you are. I know what you about. A lot of these racists, they lie. Mm -hmm. They play mental gymnastics mm -hmm. with us. And it fucks us up. Mm -hmm. They play a lot of mental fuckery mm -hmm. and like 
I use this example a lot, but with the Colin Kaepernick shit, mm -hmm. I was in the military. Mm -hmm. I never saw no nigga care about the fucking national anthem mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick said, I don't care about the national anthem. Mm -hmm. So they just react to whatever niggas do. If niggas all decide to fucking swim, they're going to have a problem with pools. I just put that cracker shit in there to make them say who they really are. These racist niggas are so pussy and so fucking like they lie and they play all these little games. Mm -hmm. Just putting something like the word cracker will just make them jump out the woodwork because mm -hmm. they're just so fucking stupid. They don't even realize what I'm doing. At the end of the day, like I said, I don't like the cracker <laughs> word, but I would much rather a bunch of white people be yelling out cracker than nigga because I really don't like that. Yeah, because you because you know you know they gonna come to the show and just scream that shit. Yeah, like what, like at the Kendrick shit when they was on, when the girl came yeah, up on girl? stage. Yeah, yeah they, they, ready. They, they gonna do it. So I'd rather them be like cracker. Cause like, yo, I have people at shows be like, yo, call me a cracker. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's a fetish shit. That's yeah, a, I'm like, that's some cuck shit. It's some straight cuck shit. That's I'm like, I have shit. no problem. Yo, bet. Right. I want to end. I want to yeah. end this on the quote that okay, you said. You. Um, <clears throat> you said, "I've been every version of a rapper you can be." I've been the nigga with 50 views on YouTube. Yeah. I've been the nigga with three downloads on Bandcamp. I've been the nigga with two fucking plays on SoundCloud for years. That's you capitalized the years in, in, in the article. What I hear you saying is, I am you. Yeah. I am you. Mm. And because I am you, you can be me. That's and, literally it, man. And I feel like that's very inspirational. And this I applaud you for that. First of all, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And this is why I like to talk to other artists mm -hmm. because you detected this, mm -hmm. whereas a critic or a journalist would not. Mm -hmm. This is the truth. This is why I'm saying this. There is a nigga online right now who has the, all the talent in the world, mm -hmm. has 50 views, mm -hmm. no fans, no whatever. And I'm just like, I was right there. I I, I felt like I had the, the, I put in the work and I had the, 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 the talent to do this to do the shit but like i didn't have the platform and i'm just like i've been that that's why i put that out there mm -hmm. to to give motivation to anybody who else who feels just like this specifically people like me you know what i mean so like i don't even know bro i'm so thankful that you fucking like pointed that shit out yeah i, I was that nigga i had 50 views on youtube mm -hmm. Two two fucking plays on SoundCloud, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And if I made it out that shit, trust me, you can do this shit if you really persevere. One thing about people that are successful, perseverance. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to power through the failure because mm -hmm. you're gonna fail. Mm -hmm. But it how you react to that failure is, is how you like it's it shows who you really are. So that's all I'm saying when I say I got 50 views, blah, blah, blah. Because I know there's a nigga just like that right now that's just like, this is worthless. Mm -hmm. I, I thought the same shit, yo, literally the same shit. I looked at my views. I'm like, I got 130 views total. <laughs> <laughs> what am I like? What am I even doing this shit for? Yeah. And it's just like, you know what? I'm going to die doing this shit because I'm not good at anything else. And this is the thing I love to do. And you know what? I'm going to do this shit until it fucking works out or I'm going to die trying. Everybody's like this, man. 50 mm -hmm. views, two views. Like, th this is the reality for most people. They don't see the fruits of their labor. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I have in, in, in a certain way. And I just want to show people, like, it's possible type shit. It's a very cliche thing, but it's, it's, it's true. It stands the test of time. It's cliche for a reason. It's like... Yeah, if if I can do it, you can do that shit. Because like, I was literally you, nigga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, you know. So like, yeah, that's that's so that's what that was about. So yeah, I'm I'm thankful that you actually pointed that out. No doubt. Rock and roll. Rock and motherfucking roll. Yeah. J Pig, <laughs> motherfucking rock. We made it through. <laughs> we did it. We did it, Brooklyn.